Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it I tried to be chilled, but you're so hot that I melted Fell right through the cracks Now I'm trying to get back Before the cool dawn run out I'll be giving it my bestest And nothing's gonna stop me But divine intervention I reckon it's again my turn Win some or learn some, but I won't hesitate no more, no more. I cannot wait. I'm yours. Hey, how you doing, Justin? Here today, we're checking out "I'm Yours" by Jason and Raz. Fantastic tune, this one. It can be both pretty simple, you can be pretty tricky. Definitely the big deal for this one for me is trying to get the groove right because the groove on the record is just fantastic. Jason Mraz has got a fantastic feel on the instrument and that's kind of the trickiest bit if you want to do it really well. But uh, let's start off by looking at a kind of a simple look at the chords, the most easy version that you could do. Now, I've got a capo on the, the second fret. You don't really need to use one, but it, it's a nice kind of respite from having to play bar chords all the time. And uh, when he's playing it live, he uses a really a couple of interesting chord grips as well that uh, one of them particularly needs the capo so I'm going to leave the capo on there but I'm going to talk about the chords just like they're normal not how many steps up they are from the capo. So the main chord sequence for the majority of the song there's quite a few diversions but the main sequence there it's a pretty simple eight bar sequence it's two bars on the chord B two bars on the chord F sharp two bars on G sharp minor and two bars on E. So let's just go through how to play those chords first of all in a kind of a simple way. I'm going to show you some fancy versions in a little bit. Uh, the B chord, you would normally play as a bar chord at the 7th fret, regular kind of E shape. The F sharp major bar chord, if you've got the capo on at the 2nd fret, you can just use it like an E, an open E chord grip. Uh, if you're not using the capo, of course, you'd need to bar the 2nd fret to be able to play that chord. Uh, the G sharp minor is up at the 4th fret. That's two frets above the capo, just using your third and fourth fingers, E shape again. And then we go to an E chord, which we play at the seventh fret using an A shape bar chord. Okay, so the sequence will be B, two, three, four, one, two, and then down to F sharp for two bars. Then to the G sharp minor for two bars. And then to an E chord for two bars. Now if you check out any live videos of Jason and Raz, you're going to see him play the chords a different way. Now the way I've just showed you, I'm pretty confident, is what was played on the record, because you can hear it kind of going down low there, particularly on the G-sharp minor. Uh, but the way he's doing it live very often, not all the time, because he's kind of mixing it up a bit, he's playing the B regular, but when it goes to the F-sharp, instead of moving down and using this open E chord, he's actually using this really cool little grip. Uh, where you put the third finger on the 13th fret, so of course you kind of need a cutaway uh, acoustic guitar to be able to do that. Third finger on the 13th fret of the 5th string, and then using the first finger to bar the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings at the 11th fret. So you end up with open, 13, 11, 11, 11, and nothing on the thinner string. You want to make sure that that string's muted. Okay, that's the kind of the way he's doing it there. It just sounds nice especially when we get into doing the other strumming. And then he's going to a G sharp minor, right the way up at the 11th fret. Again, you really want, you will appreciate having a cutaway if you're going to do this chord. So that's obviously nothing, 11, 13, 13, 12. And I don't think he's playing the thinner string, but it would be the 11th fret, if you're going to catch that. And then he's going down to the regular E chord. Okay, so that sequence his way, B, F sharp major, G sharp minor, and then down to E. Okay, so that's the kind of the variation that he's using there. So either way of playing those chords is going to be cool. You can choose which one you want to do. Personally, I quite like using the, the lower kind of sound if I'm playing it by myself. It sounds a little fuller. But often when Jason's playing it with a percussion player, that kind of gives it a little bit of weight in the low end, so those higher chords kind of work a little bit better. So it's completely up to you which one of those versions you'd like to play. Uh, there's quite a few little variations on that chord sequence, though. The first one happens in the second verse. 
Um, he's starting off on the B chord. Listen to the music of the moment people dance and sing. We could just one big family. And it's our God forsaken right to be loved, 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 loved. Is this really cool chord here? Which is a C sharp seven with an E sharp bass. Now I know that sounds kind of really complicated. It's actually not a particularly difficult chord, it's just got a big name. Uh, we'd start with the first finger in the eighth fret of the fifth string, second finger in the ninth fret of the fourth string, third finger in the tenth fret of the third string, and little finger reaches out to the twelfth fret of the second string. So nothing, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nothing on the thinner string. Okay? If you were struggling to play that chord, you could just play a C sharp major chord. Kind of sounds okay, but you can see quite li clearly live he's doing that uh, that grip. Uh, later in one well, the live version, the particularly the there's one particular live version which I'll link to on my website, which is fantastic, amazing performance of this song. Uh, he plays the same grip, but he also plays it up here, same notes. But if you do it this way, it's kind of directly diagonal, which is kind of interesting. Thirteenth fret, fourteenth fret, fifteenth fret, sixteenth fret. Okay, so it's like a diagonal line going. It's exactly the same chord. Okay, so you could play it that way as well if you decided to. But again, Jason and Raz mixes it up. You can too. That's perfectly acceptable. So um, that's the, the chord he's using for those little pauses. Uh, and the, the one other part that's a little bit different is the bridge, um, where he's doing just one bar of B, and then he's doing an F sharp with an A bass. Now, uh, the, the most common way of playing that is using a C-shaped bar chord. It might be a little bit tricky if you're not used to doing this one. You're barring the uh, sixth fret, and it's sixth fret, ninth fret, eighth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret, sixth fret. So it's kind of like an open C chord, okay? But you're just moving it up here, so your little fingers on the ninth fret, the bar will go down on the sixth fret, okay? You really, it's for that bass note. And then down to the G sharp minor, then down to the F sharp regular, and then there's two bars of E before he goes to the C sharp seven over E sharp bass. Uh, so that's that section. B, two, three, four. F sharp over A sharp, G sharp minor, F sharp, two bars of E, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then our cool little chord. Okay, so that's the different chord sequences you're going to find in the song. What you really want to be doing is listening to it. So I've given you the puzzle pieces now. Listening to the actual recording should help you be able to put those pieces together. Okay, now a uh, big deal again with this one is that groove and trying to get the accents for it. So I'd recommend that you start just doing simple four to the four down strums to the bar strum. Make sure that you can get the chord changes fast enough. And it's kind of got a bit of a reggae feel here, and a, a reggae feel has an accent on beats two and four. So you have this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the way he's playing it on the record, I think it's a really, really lovely idea. He's using a quite a heavy palm mute, so resting the outside part of your hand on the strings. And what he's doing is playing one and two and three and four and here with the, on the thicker string. So just and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On beats two and four, he's doing a slightly bigger movement with the hand to cover all the strings. In fact, let's go to a close up so you can see that in more detail. So to get that groove on, the first thing you want to experiment a bit with is where you put that mute. Because if you do too much, if your hand's too far away from the bridge, you don't get any note, and if it's too far off, you get too much of the note. So you want to just experiment yourself exactly where you can kind of get that. You can hear the notes, but they're not ringing out like this. But you can still kind of hear the notes. Then it's doing one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and just on the thicker string. And once you're hip with doing that, you want to do a push through on beats two and four, so to pluck the thickest three or four strings. So you end up with one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and.
of course for that E chord you're going to be having the root note the note that you're playing consistently on the fifth string instead of the sixth string to realize that that pattern is not exactly the same all of the way through it's varying it up a little bit and that's cool but that's what you want to start off with that's your kind of your base pattern and definitely I'd recommend listening to that first few times that he plays it on the original recording and really trying to pick up on the groove because to make it sit and do have that kind of nice feel it's, it just kind of sits and you can feel the groove real strong that's hard it's really difficult to make it that groovy and that's one of the things that I think if you work on that aspect of it it makes the a little bit more challenging but it really makes it sound good when you get it right so uh, that would be my advice on the rhythm if you want a simpler one just playing on beats two and four uh, is not a bad idea if you just ha hold the chord down two three four one two three four and what I'm doing is just I've relaxed the grip of the chord so it would be a mute and then I'm pressing as I play the chord and as when I relax the chord there with my left hand the chord stops so you can get that one, two, three, four, 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 one. There's lots of different ways of kind of vary it up there once you get into this. Okay, just for completer's sake, let's have a look at that little intro lick as well, because that sounds pretty cool, and if your mate knows how to play the chords, it sounds really sweet to be able to add that into. So let's go to a close-up for that. Okay, so we're starting with the first finger on the seventh fret covering the thinnest two strings. We're going to slide that up two frets and then play it again at the seventh fret. The second phrase starts with the slide again, but this time we go to a different set of notes. So this one, first finger is on the thinnest string, sixth fret, second finger is on the seventh fret of the second string. Okay? Third phrase, so we've got here first finger in the sixth fret of the third string, second finger stays where it was, which was the seventh fret of the second string. We slide that up two frets, and then we move second finger over to the fourth string and play the middle two strings. And the last phrase, we play those t same two notes again twice and hammer on the third finger into the ninth fret. I hope you have a lot of fun playing this tune. It's definitely going to be a party favourite. It's really, really cool fun one to play this one. A little bit difficult to sing. At least I found it a little bit difficult. Some of the phrasing takes a little bit of uh, figuring out. Of course, the, the trick really is to just make sure that your, your guitar part is 100% solid before you start trying to sing. And then make sure you listen to the original version and sing along with him. Because if you can't sing along with the original one and do the guitar part really confidently, the chance of getting the two together is going to be uh, pretty slim, unfortunately. But uh, I think it's worth it because this is definitely a really really great track uh, if you haven't seen it you definitely want to go and check out the live version that I'm going to post on the, the same page on my website as uh, this lesson uh, it's incredible Jason's performance is just spot on amazing vocals great feel on the guitar just nails the whole thing it's uh, pretty special hope you enjoy playing this tune I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye